An assembler program adds the first layer to a naked CPU, allowing us to write human-readable programs and have them automatically translated into that awkward machine language. That's a huge step in rendering a CPU system usable. Today I'm going to take you through programming the minimal 8-bit CPU in assembly by using a text editor and a mini assembler I've written for my CPU. If that sounds interesting, let's get started. Just to be clear, this video is about using the assembler, not about writing it. That topic would be a video series on its own. Using the minimal 8-bit assembler is really straightforward. Just open the folder where you put the executable asm.exe. As always, the download link to GitHub is in the description of this video. Next, open a console window by clicking in the path display and typing cmd. Then type ASM and hit enter to print out a little help screen. Now you can see the available options. Our program in text format gets translated into machine language by the command ASM source file up here. And by using this U option, we can automatically upload our program via the serial UART interface into the RAM of our minimal CPU. Let us see how that goes by rewriting our little test program from the last episode that prints out all the characters to the terminal screen. Okay, the first thing we should do is to set our program counter to the start address of our program. Next, let's load hex20 into our A register. Next, we output A to the terminal and increment it for the next character. Next, we branch back to out as long as A stays positive. Let's do that by using a label. We can define a label by putting a double column, like so. And if we are above 128, we need to jump back to the start of the program. Let's use another label for that and define it up here. OK, let us save our program to the folder of the assembler and type asm jars.txt with this u option. Our program should be in the memory of our computer now. Now we can reset our program counter and run our program. And yeah, that was much easier than before, wasn't it? And before we move on here, let me show you a few more things. First, by using a semicolon, you can insert comments, which makes your program even more human readable. Second, let's try out what happens if we misspell a command like that. Let's save our program and try to assemble it. And yeah, okay, we get an error here, 9, 4, undefined expression in. Of course, it should be increment. Let's correct that and try again. And yeah, okay, this time we get no errors. Okay, now let's do the one thing that all programmers do on a new system, and that is writing a Hello World program. We'll do it in a way that is nice and clean and reusable for printing text in general. Let's divide the task into two steps. First, we write a print function that takes in a pointer to a null terminated string and prints it out to the console. And second, we simply call that function to print our Hello World message. Let us begin by defining our start address. Next, we define the string hello world. Let's put a carriage return and terminate it with a zero. Now, let us initialize our stack by writing fe to the address 7fff, which is our stack pointer. Now, we enter our program loop. Let's begin with a label, call it start. And let us load the LSB of our string address and throw it onto the stack at an offset of minus 2. Let's do the same thing with the MSB and put it at minus 3. And let's call the print function we have to write. After we have done that, we can jump back to the start of our program and print out our hello world message again. OK. Note here that we have stored the address of our string a bit further down the stack because the print function will also use two bytes on the stack to deposit its return address. So we have to keep that in mind. OK, now let's write our print subroutine. That starts with a label, of course. 
Let's leave some space here and end with return from subroutine. The first thing we need to do is to get our string address back from the stack and put it somewhere we can work with it. So we need a pointer here and let's initialize it to whatever. Let's load this value from the stack. The MSB is now at position zero and not at position minus two because the call of our print function has decremented the stack twice. So by typing LDS zero, we get back the LSB of our string address from the stack and let's store it at our address pointer. And let's do the same thing with the MSB, which is now at position minus one and store it at pointer plus one. Next, let's load our first character from the address pointer is pointing to. And before we print it out, we have to make sure that it isn't zero. So let's compare it with zero. And if it is zero, we have to jump to the end of our print routine, which is our return to subroutine command. Okay. But in case we didn't read a zero character or our terminating null character, we can output the character to the terminal and increase the pointer by one. And I'm using the word operation, increase word, because it's a two byte address. Okay, now the pointer points to the next character of our string. And of course we have to use a loop here to take care of the next character, read it in, check it for zero and print it out if it's not zero. Okay. Yeah, we've defined everything. Okay, let's check for errors by assembling it. And no, no errors here. So we can upload it straight into the RAM of our CPU. Okay, let's reset the program counter and start our program. And yeah, as you can see, it prints out hello world. I'll put a link to the example programs and the assembler itself in the description of this video. In the next episode, we will be using this assembler together with an emulator I've written in C++ and OpenGL to explore how we can use the minimal 8-bit CPU and write software for it without physically having to build that system. So you'll be able to give it a try at your PC at home. Take care. Bye.